Sometimes we want to compare two categorical variables to see how they relate. We usually do this by making what's called a contingency table, which can also be described as a two-way table. Now in a two-way table, we get to see how the individuals are distributed along each variable, contingent on the values of the other variables. So for instance, we see not only that there are 325 people who are on the Titanic in first class, but we can see how those people break up into uh, those who survived and those who passed away. And we see that each of the variables first, or each of the instances of the variable class, first, second, third, and crew, uh, we can see how those are distributed along the other variable survival. So there's a lot of information in this simple two-way table. And one thing to note is that we can start by just viewing each variable alone by looking at the margins. So for instance, if I look at just this horizontal margin here, I get all the information about how the individuals or the counts fall into the categories whose values are uh, related to the categorical variable class. So I see 325 people in first class, 285 in second, etc. And I have no information about their survival, um, whether they survived or not. Okay, so when you're looking at the margins, that's the marginal distribution, and it's the distribution of either variable alone. So for instance, we, we're looking right now at the marginal distribution of class. This is the marginal distribution of class. Okay, we, we sort of like collapse this um, collapse, collapse this information into one column. I'm sorry, one row. All right, so I've got um, the marginal distribution of class. However, if I look over at the right margin at this column, I have all the information about how, how the counts broke down uh, in terms of survival. So I see 711 people survived and 1,490 did not, making up a total of 2,201. So this would be called the marginal distribution of survival. Okay, so if anyone, if you're ever asked to check the marginal, analyze the marginal distribution, then you'll look towards the margins and then just take note of what, what variable they're referring to. So in this case, the marginal distribution of class is the bottom row, and the marginal distribution of survival is the right column. Sometimes we just want to study a smaller group of people or individuals within our contingency table. So for instance, in this first, this first picture where we're limiting our attention to just the people who survived, and we're ignoring the, the non-survivors. So we can see that 711 people total survived, and we can see how each of the uh, ticket classes broke down within just the category of survival. Okay, so what we would say is that this is the distribution of class. So again, the, the, the top row is the, the values of the variable class. And we're looking at the distribution of class contingent on surviving. Contingent on surviving. So given that you survived, this picture will tell us the breakdown of people within within the classes, first, second, third, and, and crew. Okay, so a, a conditional distribution shows the distribution of one variable for just the individuals who satisfy some condition on another variable. So we're looking at the distribution of class for just the individuals who survived. On the other hand, in the bottom one, we're looking at just the rightmost column, or sorry, the leftmost column, or two columns. And here, we're just limiting our attention to the, those who had a first class ticket. And we're seeing how many of those survived and how many died. 
So 325, again, that's the total number of first class passengers, and we can see the breakdown within the category survival. So we would call this the distribution. This is the dis oops, the, the distribution of of survival contingent on being in first class. So we're, in the top example, we're thinking of the people who survived as our total, rather than everybody on the ship. And in the bottom, we're thinking of just the first class passengers as our total, rather than everybody on the ship. And these are called conditional distributions. We can convert all of these values in the contingency table into percentages. And when you do this, you want to make sure you first establish what you want to consider 100%. So in our example here, we're going to consider everybody on the ship as representing 100%. So they're the total. So that's why the 2,201 is, corresponds with that 100% down there in the right-hand column. So let's convert some of these values to percentages. Now, most of them are done already. But for instance, this 118 people, the 118 people who survived and, were in, and had second-class tickets, what percentage of all the passengers on the Titanic do they make up? So we do that calculation by simply doing 118 divided by our total and times it by 100. And when you do that, you get about 5.3%. Okay, and similarly, if we wanted to know the 673 uh, people who died who were crew members, what percentage of all the passengers on the ship do they represent? We can do that by doing 673 divided by 2,201 and multiply by 100. And you get about 30.6%. And of course, I did all the other calculations in a similar manner. But now what you can do is you can total up the rows and the columns. So if you total the top row, we find that 32.3% of the passengers survived. And um, the other information we're missing here are all of the second class, the second pass, second class passengers on the ship. So if we add these two values, we get 12.9%. So I now know 12.9% of the passengers on the ship were in second class. So we've just converted all the values in our contingency table into percentages, which sometimes is more um, is a more convenient way of of speaking about data.